Researchers at the University of California at Berkeley are programming a robot the old-fashioned way. They're sending it to preschool, according to a long-form piece on Bloomberg by Neural Network reporter Jack Clark. Jack, welcome to the show. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. And you claim on Twitter to be the world's only Neural Network reporter, I believe. Uh, well, it's a sufficiently obscure subject. There's, there's not a huge amount of competition yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, congratulations on that. And uh, I'm the world's only lovable tech journalist, so I, we have something in common. <laughs> so what did you mean when you wrote that this Berkeley robot, whose name is Brett, by the way, is attending preschool? What does that mean? It means that the robot is being taught to learn about the world and solve problems in a way more analogous to how children very young children learn about objects and learn to solve tasks than a, than a traditional computer. And, and the upshot of that is that today's industrial robots require a lot of heavy engineering, a lot of custom programming of, of, of sort of their pipelines for what they need to do and when they need to do it. This robot doesn't have that. Instead, it has what's called a, a neural network, a very, very large scale sort of mass of, of, of digital neurons which help it adjust its behaviors and learn over time in, in the same way that a, a child will learn to put, you know, stack Lego blocks on top of one another and quickly master it. All right. So this is totally fascinating, but I, I have to go back to the one of the first things you said. So the, the robot's name is Brett, but tell us what Brett stands for, because I think this is amazing. It stands for the Berkeley robot for the elimination of tedious tasks. And Brett has come a long way. I believe in 2011, they demonstrated uh, Brett being able to fold towels in a sort of a sort of scut work that no one enjoys to do. They got Brett to be able to do it. But all of the videos sped it up by 50 times because Brett was moving incredibly slowly. It was very tedious. It was very frustrating. And so in, in sort of four years, we've gone from this robot being able to fold towels incredibly slowly to being able to move with human speed to do, to solve relatively complex problems. Now, one could imagine that this is uh, a leading edge way to program AI in the future, that all the robots will go through this whole K through 12 process or something. <laughs> um, but in fact, uh, if you could in fact teach a robot to do things by learning and experiencing, uh, you really could do something that humans can't do, which is that once you have a robot that's, you know, got a PhD, uh, you can just copy that 10,000 times. That is already happening. Uh, Fanuc, the, the industrial robot giant from Japan, which makes the, the bright yellow iconic industrial robots you see in car factories, yep. that's partnered with a startup here in the valley called Preferred Networks to add AI to its robots. And it said in the announcement, which was two weeks ago, that it will use the cloud to let the robots update their, their robot brothers and sisters on, on new behaviors and let the robots teach each other things. Which is which is less terrifying than it sounds, but that's still amazing. I I love that you had mentioned um, in in your piece. You know the Brett's human-like AI network. It resulted in some surprises. Um, can you talk about some of those? Yeah. So over the summer, the researchers added memory to the robot. Me memory is a a subset of AI which is being worked on by Google and Facebook and others right now, and it's a way to let machines do long-term reasoning and pattern recognition. So they added this to a robot and they thought, great, this will let it solve more complex tasks. Like we can ask it to, to put uh, an object like a phone in one of two containers and it will be able to remember which container we've asked it to put it in. Now, when they tested it, they found that it wasn't using the new memory components at all. And so they did some experiments and they discovered that when they asked it to say, put an object in one of two areas, it was instead inclining its hand very slightly in one direction, then would look at its body and use that to work out where to go. So it was doing it was doing what people do, which is we count on our fingers instead of having to actually remember something, we use our body to remember. And it had improvised this solution. This was not programmed by the researchers and they didn't expect to find this behavior. So that demonstrates the kind of incredible adaptability and emergence that comes out of using uh, modern AI techniques. And I believe that that was the single most astonishing fact in your article, the fact that it's invented something nobody saw coming as a sort of shortcut that wasn't programmed. 
and uh, that sort of, you know, <laughs> scale that up a baz bazillion times and you've got something really amazing.